So let's read Genesis 26. Very familiar passage. It says, then Isaac, verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land. There's a land of famine. We know this story. Everybody relax. I'm not going to take an offering right now, okay? Very familiar passage for offerings, okay? I'm not taking an offering. But there was drought in the land, and God told Isaac, stay in the land. And then God told him to sow into the land. Do you know how foolish that is in the natural to sow in a land of famine? Yet Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. In the same year, a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper. How many of you here want to begin to prosper? And he continued prospering. How many of you have begun now you want to continue prospering? Until he became very prosperous. How many want to hit that goal? You want to become very prosperous, okay? For he had possessions of flocks and herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. He had produce when the world had none. I'm sure that you've heard a message about Goshen. That when everything shakes in the world, understand that God's going to create Goshens. Places where our seed grows, where the world's seed does not. And the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and they filled them with earth. And Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, said to Isaac, go away from us, for you're mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in that valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, the water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek because they quarreled with him. Let me read this all the way through and we'll go back and break this down. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also and he named that one Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he named the name Rehoboth because he said, Now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then he went up there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there, and he called on the name of the Lord, and he pitched his tent there. And their Isaac's servants dug a well. <clears throat> so they dug, in this passage, four wells. Now, the first well was Essek. And Essek means to strive with, to quarrel, to press upon, or to oppress. And I think that this is an example of, now this was, this was a flowing spring, and yet this was one of those things that, had been, that the enemy had stopped up. Do you realize that we can have a flowing spring of water in us and the enemy come along and try to stop it up? Offense, unforgiveness, hurt, disobedience, fear, shame. A lot of things that want to throw dirt in our well and stop up the living water. That's why it's so important that we spend time in the Word and that we spend time in worship and that we spend time praying because that enables us to get rid of the junk that the enemy wants to put in our well. I read the story about these little children that were taught the Lord's Prayer. And this one little child would recite the, Lord's, the one part of the Lord's Prayer this way. He'd say, forgive us our trash baskets and forgive those who put trash in our baskets. And I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty accurate. You know, we got to forgive those that put trash in our baskets. It's our responsibility to keep our well flowing. On an individual level, we're crying out for revival, but is our own well stopped? We're crying out 
for God to speak to us, but have we done the last thing that he said to us? Okay, that got quiet. <laughs> See, I think that is very important that God is looking for people who are instantly obedient. And you can say there's timing, and I understand all that, but God is looking for a willing and obedient heart. Because otherwise, a layer of silt can begin to develop. If you go to some places in the world, I, I think we were over in Ephesus one time um, on a cruise. I love cruising. Y'all remember cruising? And we were over there, and do you know that Ephesus was a port? The port of Ephesus? But right now, Ephesus is, is like six miles from the water because the silt just kept building up and building up and building up, and nobody was there to clear it out. We've got to understand as a church, as a spirit-filled, tongues-talking, apostolic, prophetic church, our wells can get stopped. And we've got to let God go down and unstop our wells. Now, as a nation, several years when I was, ago when I was here, I heard the Lord say that this region, this New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania region, was a bottleneck. You know what that is? That's something that stops up a flow. And it's a, a spiritual bottleneck for the nation. And I'm just going to, I want to just refresh you. Many of you won't remember that I said this, but I believe that we need to understand several things about this being the neck of the nation. Number one, a neck is a place of strength. We sang about strength tonight. It's a place of strength. Who, but the question is, who controls the strength? Who's wielding the strength? Okay. It's a place of adorning with favor. When Pharaoh gave Joseph a robe and a ring, he put a gold necklace around, his, around his, his neck. It was a sign of favor. I believe that there's a wealth creation anointing on this region that mammon has overtaken. Mammon, corruption, all the bad stuff. But how many want to reclaim what God originally created this region to be? A righteous wealth creation nation. Amen? And that the wealth that flows out from here would be righteous wealth. See, mammon is not the word money. Mammon was a Canaanite god that demanded worship. And you couldn't serve God and serve mammon. It wasn't about money. Money's not evil. Let me try this side over here. Money's not evil, but the love of money is the root of all evil, okay? So I believe that we're going to see a reclaiming of righteous wealth in this area. Also in this neck region, a neck is where a yoke is born. It's where you carry a yoke. But how many know the scripture says that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing? So I told you a silly little story about refreshing. But you know why I did that? Because there was an anointing that got released that destroyed a yoke of a religious spirit. And I'll tell you what, as a ministry, we've never been the same. As a person, I've never been the same. I learned things that day the hard way. But understand this, we've got to let God break out of our religious traditions. And I would be the first one yelling yes and amen until it happens to me. We've got, I'm, I'm, I'm conditioning you. I'm getting you ready for the Holy Ghost showing up and just blowing out, blowing off the limitations. I'm telling you, I know your, I know your leaders and they'll just go with it. They will go with it. I know them. They want nothing more than the power and the presence of God, the yoke-destroying anointing to come and set captives free. 